It's Entomology Animated, celebrating the amazing biology of insects using the power of digital animation. Ding! Hi everyone, this is Eric Keller for Entomology Animated. I'm starting a new project. This is a damselfly, Caloptrix uh, maculata. I hope I'm pronouncing that close to right. It's the ebony jewel wing uh, damselfly. So take, check it out here on Wikipedia. Uh, just a quick note, I just uh, donated 20 bucks to Wikipedia this year to help keep them going. So if you use the resource a lot, please consider donating to them to keep them keep the valuable resource available for all of us who need to find this information quickly. So this is a really cool looking damselfly. So here are some pictures on Wikipedia. I tend to not like to use uh, too much photographic reference in these videos without crediting the photographers. So I'm not going to show you all the reference I'm using because I did a web search on this particular species and just grabbed as many images as I could. Uh, but I can't show you those to you because they belong to somebody else. But I did want to mention um, the reason I picked this particular um, insect is uh, it was at the request of John Abbott. And uh, John and his wife Kendra run Abbott Nature Photography. They have a great website with lots of cool images of dragonflies, damselflies, and other insects. John Abbott is an entomologist. He's a professor and an expert on dragonflies and damselflies. And he's asked me to help him uh, animate uh, the process of uh, damselfly mating because it's quite interesting apparently from a biological point of view. I have a long way to go before I get that animation going, but of course the first step is to model our cast. So um, these are some of his photos of uh, the um, jewel wing uh, dra damselfly. And so I'm using these and others that I found online. So let's switch over to time lapse and I'll show you how I got up to this point. Of course, I still have a long way to go. And after this, I'll probably start working on the wings. So I'm starting with Z spheres, kind of an old school approach and just kind of get the silhouette of the basic forms of the body, not worrying about the wings, just the overall proportions, maybe the placement of the segments of the body as well as blocking out the legs. All of this is gonna be converted into dynamite, into dynamesh and then cut up later. Okay, so I've converted the model into polygons. So I've gone from Z-sphere to polygons and I've got Dynamesh turned on so that I have an even tessellation across the surface. And I'm using Sculptor's Pro Mode as I'm sculpting on the uh, parts of the model. So this adds more geometry at the parts that I'm sculpting. Now I'm gonna wipe this out every time I re-Dynamesh the surface. Uh, but that's okay, that's how I like to work with Sculptor's Pro because I'm going back and forth between do low detail and high detail low density meshes and high density meshes because really at this point I'm just trying to understand the organism and I'm using the sculpting tools as a way to kind of explore the parts of the surfaces so I don't get hung up if I have to redo things. So once I'm happy with the basic proportions I'm going to polygroup each of the parts of the surface. I'm hiding other parts of the surface, Control w to polygroup. Once I've polygrouped everything I'll use the split and split groups in the uh, subtool section to split each of the polygroups into its own subtool. Now I'm just working on the head as its own subtool. So I'm using Dynamesh, I closed off the back of the head using the close holes function, and I'm using the Damien Standard Brush, the Clay Brush, Smooth and Hard Polish Brush, just to kind of explore and divide up the face and try and figure out where everything goes. Again, it's a lot of back and forth, it's a lot of doing things and redoing them. That's the ocelli at the top of the head, so those are the three little small basic eyes, and then you can see the large bulbous eyes on the side. Just trying to figure out how to get them that nice round quality that I see in the, photograph in the photographs, so that takes a little bit of work there. So you can see there's the thorax, the legs, and the head. So apologies if things get very technical, if you're not a big ZBrush user, hopefully you can just kind of sit back and enjoy watching this, uh, so you can ignore some of the jargon. But I'm just going to each of the subtools here, kind of blocking out. Uh, this is the thorax right here, so, uh, so kind of using masking there to kind of pull parts out. And then uh, every once in a while, I'll re dynamesh the surface, clean up the geometry. I'm kind of using the Damien Standard Brush to carve in the details, so you can see on this little section right here, which uh, I'm not exactly sure what this is called because it comes from the head. Between the head and the thorax, there's probably like protothorax or something like that. I have to look that up. Um, and then I've separated the eyes into their own subtool now. So the head is now, the, uh, the eyes have been cut off. So now I can work on the head without worrying about messing up the eyes. Um, and so you can see I'm just 
blocking in kind of the parts of the face, moving the antenna around. Um, since this is a very shiny inset, it's hard to see details in the reference. You kind of just have to go with your gut in some cases and then just look at more and more photographs and, and until you really start to resolve those parts of the model. I haven't been able to find um, this particular insect online that I can buy a specimen of and look under my microscope. So I'm working entirely off of photographs, uh, which is always really difficult. Um, so we've got sort of this uh, back part here of the thorax. It kind of looks like a lytra and a beetle, but uh, again, I've got the terms for each of these parts. I'm using masking to kind of help as I refine these different parts. Uh, using again, if you're curious about the brushes, I'm using just a basic clay brush and Damien standard brush to make those lines and inflate smooth and hard polish. Um, and just, you know, really, it's all about just trying to figure out where everything is at this point. So you can see, uh, I think the thorax is starting to look okay. Uh, I'm not going to worry about getting it perfect just yet because I'm going to split it up further and I'm even going to retopologize all of these parts in my out. Uh, once I'm happy with them. Um, again, that's a ways off though. Uh, it takes a while to get happy uh, with these uh, models. So now I'm working uh, here on this long extended abdomen in these different sections. I always have to count these or recount them to make sure they have the right number. Um, and then I'm just trying to figure out the proportion uh, relative to the thorax and the head. So I'm using the Damien Standard Brush to really make these divisions quite exaggerated. And you can see every once in a while, I'll, I'll use the clay polish feature to kind of clean up the whole model, this part of the model, and then go back and refine some more, hit it with the Damien Standard Brush, do some carving, tweaking. Now I can move on to the legs. So these legs, what I'm going to do is I'm going to split them into poly groups, but I'm going to keep them as one subtool. And I'm going to split, I'm going to use the groups function in Dynamesh, so that it'll re-Dynamesh the surface, but it'll create divisions between the segments of the leg, which hopefully you'll see here in a second. Right now I'm just right, just blocking out the, uh, the basic parts of it. Um, and this is, I usually work really hard on one pair of legs, knowing that I'm going to duplicate it eventually. So now I've split it into different sections using Dynamesh with group. So you can see there, there's divisions there, but they're all closed off surfaces. Um, so I'm going to duplicate the front legs and replace the other legs with copies of the front legs. So here's where I'm at right now. I've got a uh, polyframe on, turned on for this leg subtool so you can see the geometry. This is just basically a Z remesh geometry, so it's not great in terms of topology, but it's good enough for now, just while I'm blocking out the proportions. But you can see there are different segments now. So I split up the original Dynamesh version into polygroups, then I turn the group feature on under Dynamesh. So if we get geometry, Dynamesh. I turned on groups, I Dynameshed it, which then splits it into different closed off surfaces. And then I duplicated the subtool, deleted the old mid and hind leg subtools that I had there before. So I got rid of those and I just duplicated the front legs as a subtool, moved it back, repositioned it. Uh, you know, change the proportions according to my reference and then kind of reposition these. The tarsus here are kind of facing this way as opposed to these guys. And I did the same thing with the hind legs. And that just saves some work. And what I'll do is, you know, as I'm working on the legs going forward, I'm going to retopologize these guys carefully in Maya to be a bit more efficient because eventually I want this to look good in a game engine like Unreal as well as in, as in Maya. But my target is usually to try and get something that looks good as a game model. Um, but in any case, so uh, I'll retopologize this to make it much more efficient, and then I'll even bring it back into ZBrush, I'll sculpt it, and all that kind of stuff. And every time I take these legs up to a certain point where they're pretty good, I'll duplicate it, delete the these legs, and then reposition accordingly, or I'll reposition with the old legs as a reference, um, just to save some time, and I'll do that over and over again because it's, it saves time in trying to just sculpt each pair of legs individually. At a certain point, of course, each pair of legs starts to pick up more and more differences, you know, in the, as you look at the reference. So uh, at a certain point, I do have to kind of stop the copy and paste kind of approach and start to really refine the legs and give them kind of the individuality that they have. For a dra damselfly or dragonfly, it's not that big a deal because their legs are, are just little sticks. 
they're pretty simple, no offense to the insect. Um, they're masters of flight, so we can make fun of their legs. Um, if you were doing something like a praying mantis or even some beetles, then the differences between the pairs of legs get really, really big, like the dung beetle that I'm also working on right now. It's each pair of legs there is very, very unique. So we, the copy and paste method doesn't work as well, but in this case it does. So I'm gonna close this video out and in the next one, when I get to it, we'll start working on the wings, which are spectacular for this particular species. Um, so I'm looking forward to figuring out how I'm gonna do that and I will share that process with you as well. And of course, I got a plug. Uh, don't forget to check out my Noman Workshop video series on hyper-realistic insect design, available on the Noman Workshop website. We've got uh, 21 whole chapters discussing all the various stages that I go through. Uh, when creating insects, plus um, some sort of discussions on insect anatomy, both interior and exterior, and all that kind of fun stuff, and a lot of cool new ZBrush tools and sort of my design process. So check that out for a much more in-depth look at how I make CG insects. Thanks again.